Again, there is no liberty if the judiciary power be not separated from the legislative and executive. Were it joined with the legislative, the life and liberty of the subject would be exposed to arbitrary control, or the judge would be then the legislator. Were it joined to the executive power, the judge might behave with violence and oppression. Democratic and aristocratic states are not in their own nature free. Political liberty is to be found only in moderate governments, and even in these it is not always found. It is there only when there is no abuse of power, but constant experience shows us that every man invested with power is apt to abuse it. Montesquieu's main concern was government and how to limit the power of government. I am the Senate. But how do you make sure that the government's power is not absolute? <laughs> Let me ask you, how would you limit the power of government? How do you make sure that the government or members of the government don't abuse their power? How do you make sure judges don't accept bribes? How do you make sure that the president doesn't abuse his power? How do you make sure Congress doesn't pass bad laws? Montesquieu recognizes that there are three basic powers of government. One, to legislate or to make laws. Number two, executive power, which basically means to enforce laws. And three, judicial power, which means to try cases. Montesquieu wanted to make sure that legislative, executive, and judicial powers were not in the hands of one person. Montesquieu thought you should have a separation of powers, a system of checks and balances, if you will. Montesquieu says power should be a check on power. Montesquieu knew that power could lead to corruption, but remember, remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So you need three separate branches that have checks or limits on the other branch's power. We'll come back to this when we talk about the Constitution in a later episode.